Get ready, because today we're going to talk about how to write character arcs over the course of multiple stories. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. A number of my subscribers requested today's video, so here's what we're going to do. We'll discuss what character arcs are, how characters transform over multiple entries in a series, and finally, I'll give you some tips for building these longer arcs. Here's your spoiler warning for today. All of the stories on your screen contain heavy spoilers. All right, real quick, let's start off by answering the question, what is a character arc? And it's a transformation that a character undergoes. It can be mental, emotional, psychological, or moral. And it involves internal growth that is brought on by external pressure. And these arcs usually end with positive or negative change for a character. For example, in Terminator 1 and 2, Sarah Connor starts as an everyday waitress and becomes a warrior. In the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Aragorn starts as a ranger who grows to accept his destiny and responsibility as king. In the Rocky movies, Apollo is introduced as the heavyweight champ before gradually losing his image, his title, and eventually his life. Finally, in Breaking Bad, Walter White transforms from a timid high school teacher to a powerful drug kingpin. Now let's look at some tips for writing a series arc. The first one is to know your starting point. I recovered these in the four examples I gave you, but it's important to remember that how you establish a character will determine the trajectory and the impact of their journey. You need to give them plenty of room for growth right at the beginning of the story. In the case of Sarah Connor, she starts off as an everyday waitress. She's soft in terms of her attitude and demeanor, and in order to defeat the machines and prevent the future war, she'll need to toughen up. With Aragorn, he's introduced as a ranger. He's good in a fight, but he's uncomfortable with the idea of wielding power. In order to protect those he cares about, that will have to change. Apollo Creed is established as the undisputed heavyweight champ. He's a man of pride, and that pride leads to arrogance, which leads to his career downfall. Finally, Walter White is established as a brilliant chemistry teacher living a life that is anything but brilliant. When he gets diagnosed with cancer, he decides to enter the meth business and put his chemistry skills to use. Second tip is to know your ending point. I'm a big believer that you should know your ending as soon as possible. It makes the whole writing process a lot easier, and I do understand that some writers, however, like to discover their characters as they go. And that's perfectly fine, but make sure you at least have an idea of where their arc will end. If you know how an arc begins and ends, filling in the middle parts becomes a lot simpler. For instance, if you know that Sarah Connor will become a warrior who prevents a future war, you know that you have to toughen her up through the story events as well as during the interval between movies. With Aragorn, if you know he's going to become king, then create events that challenge him to become a leader and embrace his responsibility. Now with Apollo Creed, things are a little different because the Rocky movies are more self-contained. I'll talk more about Apollo later. For now, let's finish up with Walter White. Here's a character who ends up as a meth kingpin, and he loses every everything he holds dear in the process. Going from a family man to a drug lord is a significant change, and in order for it to work, you need to have proper motivation and growth along the way. You need to create scenarios where he overcomes his fears, masters the business, and grows more ruthless over time. Third tip is to define your character's flaws and motivations. These are two critical components to character arcs. Flaws prevent characters from achieving true happiness, and motivations drive a character to pursue their goals. Sometimes Sometimes flaws and motivation work hand in hand to send the character toward destruction, while other times the character is motivated to overcome their flaw, which leads to positive growth. For example, Sarah Connor is introduced as being unorganized. That's her flaw. And her motivations include survival, then later on protecting her son. Those needs compel her to learn discipline and survival skills. Aragorn is hesitant to embrace responsibility, but motivated to protect those he cares about. Over the course of the trilogy, he learns that in order to defend his people, he needs to embrace his role as king. Apollo Creed's flaw is pride, and his motivation is the desire to protect his image. His pride leads him to underestimate Rocky Balboa during their first fight together, then in the second movie, Apollo's flaw and motivation drive him to stage a rematch. Then in Rocky III, Apollo's flaw and motivation remain the same, but this time they bring about good things. His goal becomes training Rocky after Rocky loses to Clubber Lang, and Apollo becomes an ally and friend to Rocky, and together they manage to restore their reputations. But then in Rocky IV, Apollo's pride dooms him again. Feeling threatened by the idea of a Russian athlete dominating the boxing world, Apollo comes out of retirement and he fights a dangerous battle. 
battle. Rather than admitting defeat after taking a beating, Apollo insists that the fight go on. Things end tragically for Apollo, but his flaw and motivation send him through a series of ups and downs that make him an engaging and memorable character. Finally, we have Walter White. His flaw is his ego, and his motivation changes over the course of the series. Early on, Walter cooks meth to support his family, but once his cancer is no longer an issue, his motivation becomes achieving power within the drug world. Last tip for today involves transformation checkpoints, and these are critical steps along the journey. Often they occur at the end of a book, movie, or season of television, although sometimes they do happen in the middle. Essentially, what you want to do is give your character a smaller arc that contributes to their overall overall series arc. When they complete that smaller arc, it serves as a checkpoint. Going back to Sarah Connor, she has a checkpoint at the end of the first movie. She takes on the challenge of becoming the mother of humanity's savior, and by completing her arc, she prepares herself for who she'll need to become in the sequel. With Aragorn, he has checkpoints at the end of the first and second movie, as well as toward the end of the third movie. In Fellowship, Boromir recognizes him as king, and Aragorn promises to protect their people. In The Two Towers, Aragorn embraces a leadership role during the Battle of Helm's Deep. Then in Return of the King, he embraces his role as king before leading his people to victory. Apollo Creed ends each of the first three movies at checkpoints. At the end of Rocky 1, his reputation is damaged because he failed to KO Rocky. Then at the end of Rocky 2, Apollo loses the heavyweight title, which prompts him to retire from boxing. Finally, at the end of Rocky 3, Apollo solidifies his friendship with Rocky and gets one more rematch. With Walter White, you can consider each season of the show as a sort of arc for him. In season 1, he takes on the name Eisenberg and starts to leave his mark in the meth trade. In season 2, he shifts further to toward his Eisenberg persona when he lets Jesse's girlfriend die. In season three, Walt has a man murdered in order to protect his place within Gus's organization. Then in season four, Walt brings about Gus's death and seizes power. And it's worth noting that throughout the course of the series, Walt grows more powerful while also becoming less moral. It creates this interesting dynamic where in the earlier seasons he kills in self-defense or by not taking action, while in the later seasons his kills become more deliberate and appropriate for someone who's becoming a drug lord. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what is your favorite character arc that happens over multiple series entries? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books and be sure to leave reviews on Amazon. Bad Parts is great if you like small town horror. It's about people trading away their sick and injured body parts in order to get healthy again. And then Entry Wounds is great if you like thrillers. And it's about a guy who picks up a haunted gun and he can't put it down till he kills six people with it. Also, be sure to check out my other videos, like, share, and subscribe, maybe even hit that thanks button for me. And as always, remember to keep on writing.